Hello everybody, this is Kenny at the General Paintball Museum and today we're going to show you how to maintain or maintenance the Tipman FT-12. We'll locate that on our wall and pull it off and put it on our tech bench. First step is to make sure it doesn't have air and then followed by uh, removing the barrel. Uh, this allows us access to remove the collar that goes around the front of the gun and the barrel that holds the top of the gun, FT standing for flip top and 12 standing for 2012 model. Uh, then we clean the barrel, uh, squeegeeing it, wiping it down, getting rid of all the old paint. This one's been well used. Uh, then we push the little tab underneath of it and twist it off, holding the top on so nothing falls out. Uh, we'll clean that while we have that off and apart and uh, set it aside for later. And then next we'll remove the top, it hinges up and out. Uh, now you can see the dirty inside. We'll also remove the feed neck by flipping the lever, sliding it up, and then it removes off, cleaning it up. Now we clean the inside of the marker, get all that old crusty paint out, um, and then see that the top, the cocking knob there, which is internal, I had a little lubricant in here. It is not necessary. I just like keeping everything lubed up so it doesn't corrode or rust. Now we'll start working on the lower half. Uh, this will remove the spring, spring guide and buffer o-ring, the linkage arm and the rear bolt, and then the front bolt slides off and then the valve just pulls straight up and out it comes. Uh, now you can see that the ball detent is bad, uh, it's fallen into pieces. And so we'll start wiping that down and then we will slide the front grip off and then it'll give us access to replace the ball latch or ball detent. Then with that removed, we can continue to get rid of any old crusties. Uh, this one's pretty crusty, so I'm using some fine grit sandpaper to remove some of the paint that is like glue in the breach of the marker to help clean it up, wiping out the all dust and dirt out of it. And then we will lube that up and uh, rub the oil in. I also add a little oil near the sear and the trigger as those are moving parts. Again, definitely not necessary but uh, I just like to keep everything looped up and uh, keeps corrosion, rust, and hopefully paint from sticking in the future. I also drop a couple of drops of oil down the air supply tube. Uh, now the valve, we just wipe that down and again, uh, make sure everything's tight, secure. Uh, if it's not leaking, I wouldn't bother taking it apart. I add a few drops of oil around the plunger and in the air intake, uh, and then work that in a little bit, and then work on the power front end of the power tube where the front bolt rides and put some lubricant on that also. Uh, the rear bolt, we just wipe it down, we check the O-rings, and then give it a good oil. Uh, we make sure that all is oiled well, but not so much uh, where the sear catches. So we wipe a little bit of that excess off around that area. And now the linkage arm, again, we just clean it off, add a little lubricant on it, and set it aside for assembly. Front bolt, we do the same, wipe it down, uh, check the O-ring, lube everything up good on the inside and the outside uh, because it does right on the power tube. Uh, the O-ring uh, for the buffer O-ring and the spring guide and spring all can get wiped down. Uh, you can add oil to them um, and then that'll keep it again from rusting but it is again not necessary. Now we will start the reassembly process. We'll slap the valve back in the front bolt onto the power tube, let it glide across a few times to work in the lubricant. And then we will add the rear bolt and the linkage arm, which rides in a little slot on the power tube. And then we install the spring spring guide and the buffer O-ring. Uh, there's a notch for the spring guide in the back of the marker there for that to rest in so it doesn't pop back out on you. Then we can put the top back on top. Uh, hooking the back in and then flopping it down and then we can attach the collar temporarily uh, we need to put the uh, ball latch in uh, so we have to get a new one of those there's the old one with the new one and making sure it cradles the ball so it's in the right direction otherwise the front bolt will chop this off now we can reinstall the front grip but we have to remove the collar making sure the top doesn't flop down so uh, and then you want to cock the gun so that the ball latch lays flat uh, so the bolt's not in the way. Sliding the grip back on, then you can reinstall the collar for the final time and make sure that it's uh, snug and secure and latches back into the button. Uh, then attach the barrel and then the feed neck can slide right back on and then flip the lever to tighten it down. So now it is all back in place. I dry fired a couple times just to work the lubricant in and we're good.
This is an earlier FT12 model as it's a little bigger. Newer models are yellow grip panels and a little thinner. Thanks for watching. Thanks for the support. Until next time, see ya.